Hey, coaches. Welcome back to episode 26 of Football Talk with Coach Chip. Also, welcome to all you others that join us on a quite regular basis. Appreciate the, all the folks that are watching. Appreciate the subscriptions. <clears throat> Appreciate the likes. I really do. Remember, go down to the bottom, click on that like, click on that subscribe, and click on that little bell that will alert you when I'm uploading. Well, how you doing? In about an hour and a half, six o'clock, Georgia starts their stay-in-place uh, policy. We'll let you know how that goes on the next step, how it's going on the next episode. All right, I hope you're sur surviving your corona hiatus. And today we're going to talk about the buck sweep drill. It's a drill, it's kind of a skeleton drill. You don't use everybody, you just use the guards. You can include as many people as you want to, guard, center, uh, play side tackle. I like taking my tackles and separating them and putting them over there with the H's and the tight end type kids and let them work on their down blocks while we're working on the pulls. And it's just a good way to get specific and get particular and picky about their depth and about their footwork. And it's something you can do in the summertime whenever they let us get back with our kids. We can do it in the summertime. You can do it on air. You need a few bags, uh, some cones. And the football, if you want to include your running backs, and just work on your buck sweep. And as I was telling you before, with the new rule about how they're going to enforce the man downfield, I think gap scheme is the wave of the future. It's a blast from the past, when it, but incorporating it with something new, the RPO, because the, the only guy that's going to get beyond the yard down the field is the backside guard. Well, if you're running the quick, RPOs, the short ones, the glances that we've talked about, then that joker won't be down the field more than a yard when that ball is thrown. And remember, the rule is, is where is the lineman when the ball is thrown? You're blocking down, you're kicking out, and you're wrapping. Well, that wrapper is the only one that's going to be up down the field more than a yard, and the ball will be gone by the time he does it. So I think this is the wave of the, the new wave, bring, marrying the old with the new, and that's what football is all about. All right, let's get started. All right, as I said, we're going to talk about a buck drill. Teaching the buck with his max reps. Get as many reps as you possibly can. That's what practicing football is all about. All right, what you're going to need, you're going to need your guards, your center. You don't have to have your center. Sometimes I'll put this early on. I'll take the center and put him with the tackles so he can work on his back blocks. But remember also, he needs to work on a reach block, and we'll work on that, show you that in a little bit. You need a bag to lay on the ground. Lay his bag on the ground. That's the angle for the backside guard. You need a couple of cones, four cones if you're going to include the backs, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And then your backup guards, the ones not repping or centers, to represent the nose. Also, two of you include the tackle to give you a three right here or a two. And then, of course, a backer. And he doesn't have to be over here and come running over here. If you want to work on him turning up, wrapping right in here, and sealing that guy, just stand him right there. Because remember, you're talking about a, another lineman. You're not talking about a linebacker. All right, so you need your play side guard cone set up about two feet from where your tackle's heels will be when they get down in their stance, about two feet. I usually just get down like I'm with the tackle. When I'm setting the drill up before practice or in, in between, always have your drill set up before the drill starts. You don't want to waste five minutes of a five-minute period, I mean two minutes of a five-minute period setting up a drill. So uh, about two feet is where I put it behind the, black, the back, the play side tackles, heels, excuse me. And then another cone for your backside guard about a foot deeper and about a foot inside of the first cone. And that's all you need. And you can do it, use other things, be creative if you don't have it. Um, I've used uh, helmet liners from the old bike helmets. Don't ever throw stuff like that away. Find you a box to keep junk in. I've used the little beanies that we put on top of our scout team guys. I put them down right here, okay, before. I've taken just anything I could put right here that wouldn't hurt a kid if he tripped on it to be the bag. But if you got those little, uh, you know, those funny shaped bags, uh, instead of the round ones, you can put it right here. And if you don't want to get your kids hurt and stuff like that, when you're getting deep in the season or early on when you're just in helmets, you have these kids holding shields right here. Just remember, you're working on every little detail, every little detail. 
All right, let's look at buck versus an over front. All right, of course, you're going to get your back block right here. This is an over front. That's, a, that's an A-gap defender to the weak side, and there's your tackle and a three technique, a D-tackle. Now, here's the backer that they'll get this scraping. We'll go ahead and put him right there. All right, on the snap of the ball. You don't even need a ball. You just say it's on one. And they take off. You get If you want to include your offensive tackle, there's your down block. I like putting mine over because uh, in another group with another coach is working on down blocks simply because some of the fronts you're going to go against do not have a guy for him to block down on. They'll be blocking all the way down to a backer. All right, and then work on that independently of the guards. We're going to do a skip pull, as I told you before. It's going to push off with that inside foot and cross it over behind the play, uh, the outside foot and push back. Remember we talked about that in case that's a dude and he's getting some penetration right here. We don't want them to get two for one. So you're going to push back, get your depth, to get behind your cone. And as you do that, you go boom, you're going to shift gears from reverse into forward, coming right downhill, scraping paint off those down blocks, it could be a tight end and a wing. It could be just the H that we do it, like to do it with. Come right here and kick the force player. Kick the force player. Aim for his inside number. If he turns and looks at you, and if he stays square to the line, just get him on his inside shoulder and turn him out. And remember, when you hit him, force him up the field. Force him up the field. If you lose him up here, it's not that big a deal. You do not want to lose him in here. So attack on the inside. Backside, the green guy is going to skip pull, stay flat until he crosses the midline of the center. That's the center's butt pad. We talked about that in episode 25, okay, where the butt pad would be. He's going to skip pull, push back again, get depth to get away from all the stuff up here in case we got a, a big old nose that's getting pushed back on our center. And as soon as you clear the midline, get depth around your cone, get downhill on this bag. This bag represents the down block or the down blocks. If you're doing it with a tight end and a wing, you can do this with any type of buck sweep team. If you do it like we do it with, a, with an H in the backfield blocking down, if you do it like I've noticed some other teams, they got a Y on the line blocking down, or the traditional way of doing it. you got a tight end and a, a wing, both of them blocking down. This bag is the down blocks. That's their butts. That's the rump line that we've talked about in some other episodes. The line of booties right here that this cat wants to be scraping down right here. I tell the kids you want to strike a match on their butt. That's how close you want to be, that you can strike a match. Boom. The old white tip matches. Now, we're not worried about the wheel over here running through the run-through lane that's created by the playside guard as much as some teams are because we've got so many RPO that we, RPOs that we do and we're reading the wheel. And if he comes here, we're going to pull and throw. But you don't always going to RPO, and a lot of y'all don't RPO. One of the advantages of skip pulling, as he comes right here, he's looking. And if you're getting an A-gap runner, try guy trying to run through, you attack right now. You say, well, who's going to get this guy? Hey, they're a guy short now, okay? They're a guy short anyway because of that. And plus, you're not going to get a play. And you say, so what you do, you skip pull, you stay flat, just like I'm looking at you right now. I'm looking at the camera, okay? He wants to be looking at the defense as he karaoke skip pulls. And if he sees a runner trying to run through this A gap, boom, right now, he attacks. And you do that, put you another guy right here and simulate that, and let him do that. And you get a lot of reps, because as soon as they go, boom, these guys jump in, the ones playing your defense, they jump in, okay? And uh, then they go. you go again. And early on, you can go like five minutes right, five minutes left, that's a good 10 uh, – Double, uh, double period. I like five minute periods. And all you gotta do is flip the drill over and you work it to the left. And you just keep rotating those guys, getting many reps as you can. I recommend that you film it. If you just film it on your phone, then upload it, upload it to your huddle app. And right after practice, say, hey guys, come in here, give them a candy bar 
uh, a juice pack or whatever. We used to do it around this table we have in the middle of our locker room and just stand around my iPad and look, and it takes you no time to look at 10 minutes of film because it's not even 10 minutes of film because you're not filming the in-between stuff. And you're, you get, and also, too, that helps you understand how many reps you're getting. You know, you don't want to, you know, you think, you know, I'm getting good work, I'm getting good work. But when you film it, you go like, man, we didn't get but five reps in five minutes. You should be getting 10 reps in five minutes, easily. You should be getting at least two reps and get those guys bouncing around and moving and do what we did. We run the pee out of them in the summertime to get them in shape. We run them pretty good the first week of summer practice, and we tell them. So, guys, the more you bounce around in practice and run from spot to spot, the less we'll run. The, the more up-tempo we are, are on offense, and you guys control that, talking to the kids, the more the less running we'll do at the end of practice because you're getting your conditioning in while you're actually doing some practical football work. So encourage them, you know, care, you know, hold that motivation over their head. Nobody likes to run. Even runners don't like running necessarily. Um, so especially sprints. Get them bouncing around. Maximize your reps. All right, this is buck drill versus under. All right, now you got one guy short. You don't need your tackle. This is why I like putting the tackles over by themselves with another coach and letting them work on down blocks on their own. All right, you're going to reach the nose right here. Reach the nose because he's play side. Remember, my rule on that is center's got play side, A gap, D lineman. I mean, excuse me. Center's got A gap, D lineman. He's going to reach him or he's going to block back on him. If he's here, he's going to reach him. If he's in a zero, he's going to reach him. If he's over here, he's going to block back on him. This is buck right. Same thing. Got your cones. Boom, right here. Front side, play side, you got fours. Back side, same skip pull. Okay, same skip pull. Get around your cone, get downhill, scrape and paint, scrape and paint, and attack right here. As you pin in that guy as he's trying to get outside. Okay, it's a piece of cake. You just do it over and over and over again. If you begin with, you want to work it against one front, work it against one front. And eventually, the, all the kids will know what they're doing. You say, hey, guys, buck drill. They'll see it when they see it set up, when they come out for pre-practice. And I say still, if you, if you need more work on this, while they're working on kickoff or kickoff return on special teams, have it set up where you can steal reps during special teams. There's not many linemen at many schools that are playing on kickoff, kickoff return. They'll be on extra point. Some of them will be on punt, maybe. Steal reps. You know, that's another period that you can steal every week, maybe twice a week, that you can do work on this and you get it down pat and then you get it down where you're doing a five-minute period and you're bouncing, you tell them over, under, and they know what to get in. All right, buck drill versus an odd front, same thing. He's reaching the nose, same thing. Getting around this cone, he's got force. Same thing, skip pull, staying flat. Crossing midline of the center, his butt pad, get your depth. If you got a guy trying to run through, attack him, then get your depth, get around your cone, and get down here. You can use different color cones and just tell this guy, hey, you got you got the green cone, you got the red cone. You know those PE cones they use for elementary school? Those are great practice uh, tools as well. All right, buck drill with a switch call. Now, uh, if you've got a center that can pull, I highly recommend this. The center will not skip pull, though. Please tell me in the comments below. Have you ever seen a center that could skip pull? I'd love to see that. But I've seen some that could pull like a son of a gun. All right, this is when you got a, a two-eye, and that's a booger bear right there to reach. So you make a switch call. He blocks down. Now your center pulls. He's got the, near, got the closest cone to the line. Gets around it. He's the black black line. And boom, he's kicking force. The green, the backside guard, same thing. Nothing changes for him. He's still getting his reps. All right, we can do this versus a one tech or a zero tech if the nose is a dude that we cannot reach. If the, your center just can't reach him. Remember, a down block's always better, okay, than a reach block. Always better. God gave us angles for a reason because they're better. All right, buck drill with a gap call. Now, a gap calls when you got two A-gap defenders. What made me think about this is we had a guy on one of the pages that I'm on on Facebook 
talk about what do you do when you try to run buck and you get a team that's giving you two A-gap defenders. There were some great responses. Uh, one was something we talked about in another episode about pulling the tackle. But another guy even had the idea of letting the tackle and guard swap if you're getting a steady diet of that. So now your guard is out here doing what he always does anyway. Pull kick. Okay? And your tackle moves into guard and he's blocking down. Now, will it give it away? Absolutely. Especially if you're no huddle team and you get the call from the sideline and you see the guy switch. Okay? Unless you're going great tempo and they can do a nonchalant switch as they're jogging down the field for the next play, you, you'll have trouble getting away with that and not having them pick it up. But then the plus of going tempo is the defense doesn't have time to react to it. So what we do is we'll uh, make a gap call, block down, block down, or back, pull, he needs to know it's a gap call because now instead of him turning up, he's right here kicking force, okay? And so and, and you are getting a situation here. You're probably going to get the backer that's not walked up. You'll get him with your down block from your tackle. So now they're a backer, they're a backer short because they've got one walked up in here. So you got everybody accounted for. This tackle's getting the tackle that's still, I mean, this tackle's getting the backer that's still back there, okay? And then this one's getting the one that normally would be got by the backside puller. Okay. All right. Now you can include your running backs in the buck drill. And you get all your running backs over here, especially if you're a gun team. And if you're not a gun team, if you don't have a quarterback back in the drill, just get a football and have a guy stand here like it's gone and just hand the ball to him. Okay. He's getting his handoff, you know, getting handoff reps. And you're coming right here to his cone making his 90-degree cut that we all know and love in the buck sweep or in the buck. I try not to call it buck sweep, especially around the kids, because when they, a lot of kids, they hear sweep, they think way out here. So we just call it buck, buck, buck. But it still comes out of me from time to time. So you, it's the same. this is the same drill that we did on the first slide. Skip pull, get your depth around your cone, get downhill, and then you kick on the force. Remember, kick an inside number. Okay, we don't want to kick his outside, let him fall in. If he turns and boxes, still kick his inside number, the number on the left as the guard's looking at him. And then he's going to get his skip pull, staying flat, looking at the backer, trying to see if we get a run through, and then get his depth around his cone, downhill scraping paint, striking a match on the rump line, and he's got the guy, the scraping linebacker, coming right here. And then you get your tailback getting reps. Now, one of the things I do to make sure that tailback doesn't round off, I'll stand right here. Okay, if I'm running this drill with this cone, that way they don't go too far. They, they're going to gear it down, and I'm talking to them as they're doing it. I'm talking to them. I said, all right, gear down. You know, sink your hips, plant your feet, boom, cut up right there. And they don't want to run into you anyway, hopefully. So, now I love the... Um, the buck, the buck is one of my favorite plays. Uh, it's got a lot of moving parts, so it needs to be put in early in your install. Okay, early on in your install, you need to put buck in. But the reason I like it more, say, than uh, than the pin and pull, and I've heard guys say this, you know, in all due respect, I just don't agree with them, that the pin and pull is just like the buck. And here's why I say it's not. First off, when they invented the pin and pull, okay, if it was just like the buck, why didn't they say, okay, it's the buck? Okay, because it's not the same thing. And here's why I'm talking about. All right, if you've got a really good five technique or four technique defensive end, I mean, he's good, kid can play. And you've got a kid playing tackle that's not as good. And the tackle's trying to reach him. That's tough. Because you know, you've got a better player across from him. Okay, but if you got a tight end or an H or somebody outside of him, I'm gonna take, I'll take, and I'm just throwing these stars out there random. You got a five-star D lineman and a two-star tackle. That two-star tackle is not gonna reach that five-star D lineman. Okay? Period. End of discussion. All right. Also, you can have a two-star tight end that can down block a five-star D lineman because of the angle. This is my opinion now. I believe that the that an inferior player can down block a, a superior player. Okay? Where 
an inferior player is not going to reach a superior player. Let's just be honest. Now, we can sit here and draw it up. I can get over here on my, on, on my little app and draw things up all day long. We can reach everybody. But you know good and far well that ain't happening in the real world. Okay? If, uh, if that tackle was that good a player, that offensive tackle, he'd probably be playing defensive end. <clears throat> so, and the other thing, too, is about the pin and pull and about just running. The defense can dictate where the ball goes. If you're running buck and you want to run C-gap, you can run C-gap. If you want to put the tight end and the wing in there and you want to run D-gap, you can run D-gap. Okay, because you know exactly where you're going to run the football. You can sit there and do this buck drill and have your running back make that 90-degree cut, hit that cone every time. And he's, the ball's going the same place. You run an outside zone. It's not, this, it's not that it's a superior play. I'm just telling you why I prefer it. Okay? I prefer it. Now, is there a place for outside zone? Absolutely. I love the jet. If you've got a tailback that can really read it, you put him in pistol or put him in an eye and get under, give him that ball, let him go downhill at an angle and read that reach block and bounce it, bang it, whatever. Okay? But that's my opinion on it right there, and that's why I love the buck. All right, this has been episode 26 on the buck drill. Y'all stay safe out there. Do what they're telling you to do. It's like I tell my kids all the time. I always trust the experts. If you go to the doctor and he tells you to do something to make you healthier, listen to him. Don't listen to your brother. Okay, if you go to a lawyer and he gives you legal advice, listen to him. Don't listen to your uncle. Okay, the experts are telling us what to do. It's not costing us anything personally right now. Now, is our economy going to suffer from it? Yes. But the experts say do this. And I trust the experts. Again, that's my opinion. But then again, this is my YouTube channel, so it's my opinion. Okay? So y'all be safe. Take care. Hit me up. Comment down below. Remember, Siegel.chip, gmail.com. At Chip Siegel on Twitter. Facebook is Coach Chip. And as I always like to tell you, be elite. I'll see y'all next time.